and then Stephen Enfield from POS Supply Solutions will give a detailed case study. Um, then we'll wrap up and go through Q&A. So today's speakers, uh, I'm Brian Hodson from Oz Development. We also have Troy Graham, who's worked extensively with the NetSuite customers and Auslink customers. Uh, I'm really happy to have Stephen Enfield, who's President and CEO, CEO of POS Supply Solutions. And prior to founding POS Supply Solutions in 1999, Stephen was Director of Sales at Micros, world's leading developer of enterprise applications, serving hospitality and specialty retail industries. He has over 10 years, he had over 10 years experience at Micros, coupled with his time at POS Supply Solutions, gives him over two decades of experience in the point of sale industry, work with large multinational accounts as well as small business accounts. Stephen is an innovative entrepreneurial professional with an unwavering focus on customer satisfaction and down-to-earth approach. He holds a bachelor's degree in business administration from Gordon College. And we're really happy to have him on board here. Uh, I saw him speak at a NetSuite event uh, six, eight weeks ago uh, and really provides a lot of good insight into how to leverage technology to drive, drive your business. Uh, and he's a longtime NetSuite and Auslink customer. So let's just quickly step through some of the things that we see in our customers driving the complexity back in the warehouse uh, that really requires and, and sort of creates the need for more advanced shipping capabilities. Uh, first of all is the growth around e-business or e-commerce the business opportunity. So both you know startup companies as well as mature companies are seeing their probably their biggest channel of growth is through e-commerce and that might be through their own website might be through marketplaces, things like eBay and Amazon, uh, but it, it ends up driving those different channels or increasing the complexity of how they get, how they serve their customers, driving that complexity back into the warehouse. And we'll talk about some specific examples uh, as we go. Uh, one customer example uh, that we have is Acumen Brands. We'll talk a bit about further. Is and they they're you know startup entrepreneurial. They have three or four different uh, brands, work gear. Um, you know, country outfit gear, clothing, those sort of things, different brands serving different segments, all serve through a very highly automated warehouse running NetSuite, Auslink, and actually also some of the Kiva robots. Pretty interesting growth story, uh, but an example of just managing the different needs from a customer perspective. Uh, and obviously the customer demands are increasing, both you know, as people buy things from Amazon, their expectation around uh, selection, visibility uh, is heightened. Uh, as well as retail customers. So if you're, as companies are growing their brands, they, the larger retailers may be, maybe need to bring those in and, and service those. So the smaller companies are having to service and sell to those retail companies, and that has a different set of requirements. We're in things like advanced ship notices, compliant labels, those sort of things. Uh, and then finally, you know, about all about what NetSuite's about is being able to do this and focus the business on the business issues, driving revenue, customers, profitability, without spending a whole bunch of uh, IT resources figuring out how to how to get it to work. So, you know, the payback of a cloud solution. Uh, and as we talk about some of our customers, we find many start out doing you know sort of simple shipping on the NetSuite platform. We'll talk about that difference as they grow and as their needs increase. Uh, they'll add capabilities. Uh, you know, that might be, you know, simple integration, it might be expanded carrier services, uh, and then it grows from there. So I uh, thought I'd jump in here as well. This is Troy Graham, and just talk a little bit about our overall partnership with NetSuite. Um, we, were, we were one of the inaugural partners in the NetSuite Technology Partnership Program, which started back in, in 2005. Uh, there were 13 companies that NetSuite invited into the program. And uh, over, over the years since we became a member of the program, we, we've worked with over 500 companies using the NetSuite platform and, and helped them with various levels of automation and extensions to that NetSuite platform. And, and to me, the thing that, uh, you know, if I look at one of the real, real strengths that, that we offer, it, it's the diversity of companies that we've worked with. So as we're talking with folks about different automation requirements that you have or opportunities to streamline a process, I think we can bring a lot of experience to the table and, and hopefully as we go through the webinar today you'll see some examples of you know, that experience and, and from hearing from Stephen as well. 
But you know, to me, I think if you if we go through the discussion today and you have questions, if you reach out to us, we ought to be able to provide some relevant uh, experience with other companies about how they've gotten the most out of their NetSuite system uh, in, in using some of the Auslink extensions. In terms of how we extend NetSuite, it really falls into sort of that order management process. And today's focus really is on shipping on the right part of this wheel. Uh, we do have solutions around mobile that do uh, wireless picking and inventory control. And then in terms of connecting with partners on the bottom part of this wheel, integrating uh, your e-commerce, so things like channel advisor integration in the NetSuite, or if you have a third-party logistics or some capabilities we're going to talk about today in terms of drop shipping, uh, or you're leveraging a third-party warehouse, so leveraging partners for fulfillment uh, are other areas that we can provide some value around the NetSuite solution. Just some customer examples. Uh, as I said, you know, depending as companies grow, they end up starting uh, often with uh, with what exists natively in uh, NetSuite. So SolarBiz is an example. Uh, they were they were running on NetSuite for quite a long time using standard shipping, uh, and then we met them last year at uh, Sweet World. They one of the key things they needed was fairly straightforward. Is uh, they they're having issues with weight and. and getting the right weight, so being able to use a scale as an example. So tying that in and then leveraging the capabilities uh, of the carrier software, which we'll talk about in a sec, was something that they really got tremendous value of. They started with a solution which we call Auslink Pro, which is a pre-built integration between NetSuite and UPS WorldShip. Uh, takes no setup times, just they downloaded and installed it and they were running the next day uh, and they could use some of those capabilities. You know, another one, Brian, that I, I want to mention is Lionel NASCAR. And, and the thing that I think is really interesting about Lionel NASCAR is when we started working with them, the, the division that we worked with was this NASCAR collectibles division. So it was selling replica uh, race cars to, uh, to racing fans. And it was really a, a B2C type of business. It was a very high volume business, but it was a B2C business. Um, and, and that's really where we started working with them with, with some shipping automation and sort of extending some batch processing capabilities. Uh, with their NetSuite solution. And last year w was, was an interesting year because uh, the, the division was owned by Lionel, who makes the trains that are in a lot of retail stores and things. And what they did is they went through a consolidation process. Part of that consolidation was a, was a physical warehouse consolidation. So instead of having a separate warehouse for the Lionel train business and a warehouse for the NASCAR collectibles business, those two merged together. Well, the Lionel business was mainly a, a, B2, a B2B business. It was selling to large retailers. So procedurally, it was very, very different picking large multi-pallet orders compared to uh, you know, single B2C type shipments. So we worked very closely with Lionel to, to make sure that their NetSuite was optimized for, for getting those small B2C orders out the door quickly, but also having capacity to track and accurately pick and pack those those large retailer-based orders on the Lionel NASCAR side. So to me, they presented you know, a lot of challenges operationally because they had such a diverse group of orders and such a high volume um, of orders that they were processing through the warehouse. I mean, that's also an example. They started out with straight UPS, and they added some, some different delivery options, and then as Troy said, as the pick pack got more complex serving those two different channels, expanded their NetSuite footprint to cover the Lionel business, the legacy business, with the, you know, replacing the legacy software that was there uh, with NetSuite and Auslink. Uh, another example is Poly Performance. They do aftermarket off-road type gear. And whenever I talk to NetSuite customers, I'm always impressed at the entrepreneurial and the growth. And they're the high growth. Originally started with, uh, with Auslink as a QuickBooks customer, but basically in their growth, they quickly outgrew that and migrated up to NetSuite. Uh, and again, leverage Auslink from a shipping perspective to support that ongoing growth uh, and, and keep that streamlined shipping process. So in terms of the advanced shipping capabilities, and we'll, we'll drill into each of these a bit more as we go forward, uh, really falls into sort of three categories. One is automating business rules. Uh, so being able to, based on the shipment, the customer, 
being able to select what's the right way to get this shipment out to meet that customer need. Uh, again, it might be a mix of mode, you know, small package or freight, uh, the type of level of service, those sort of things. I'll talk a bit more about that in a second. Um, and then, you know, leveraging the, the broadest carrier support. So typically our customers will you know, be dominant in a particular carrier, UPS, uh, but there may be needs either for a customer or specific delivery areas or certain commodities where you might need uh, additional carrier options. So providing the, the breadth of options both from a carrier but also depth of services is key. Well, you know, one example of that, Brian, is a company that sold mainly uh, electronics, lots of TVs, lots of LCD, plasma-type TVs. And one of their, their challenges or, or goals to be differentiate themselves was offering home delivery and home installation as a couple of different services. And they partnered with uh, MANA Freight and, and some of the MANA Logistics Services to, to actually be able to take a, a television, deliver it, and, 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 and insert it into a customer's home. So they had a very specialized need for not only transportation, but some services that were offered by a logistics provider like MANA. So having some capability in their case to process that shipment, get the appropriate paperwork together, get the, the scheduled pickup done, uh, was really, really critical. Because prior to that being integrated into their uh, NetSuite fulfillment process, it was very, very manual, and it was something where they had a couple of people spending the lion's share of their day with this manual freight process that uh, w was really just time consuming and, and not driving any, any benefit to their customers or to their bottom line. So just one quick example of a way by using you know, a specialty carrier that, that we, we were able to work and optimize the use of, of the NetSuite system in, in a pretty specific business. And then in terms of servicing various channels, so you know, beyond the core shipping, you know, as its companies grow, being able to do drop shipping on behalf of their retail customers may require, in this example here, we show a JCPenney branded slip. So, you know, the order is coming into JCPenney, NetSuite customers using, is, is, is supplying that item and drop shipping it to the end consumer. Uh, usually what's required, often is required, is, you know, JCPenney wants that pack slip branded and looks like it comes from JCPenney. So there's an example. Uh, another example might be, um, you know, leveraging suppliers for drop shipping, being able to track and, and um, get visibility to those types of shipments. And Stephen will talk a bit about that. Uh, now, as a quick uh, sort of definition, we've talked about the carrier and service options. Uh, and as I said earlier, many customers start out with the native uh, shipping capability, especially if it's U.S. domestic, uh, leveraging FedEx or UPS. Uh, it really is a good way to get going, and, and often it takes you know some time getting, especially if they're implementing NetSuite for the first time, uh, getting experience with the whole NetSuite system, getting comfortable with that, and then realize, okay, here's areas where we can improve the business based on advanced shipping. Uh, so we'll talk a bit more about business rules, um, you know, things like we talked about different modes, freight as well as small package, and we'll talk a bit more about drop ship and outsourced sort of fulfillment. Um, you know, one area in terms of handling returns, so we have a customer who, um, Lumens Lighting, who does, uh, they handle, they're an e-commerce provider, they provide lighting from 20 to 25 different manufacturers, uh, and they were spending a couple hours in their warehouse managing those returns, and the returns rules were quite complex. Based on the manufacturer, sometimes they'd come back to Lumens, sometimes it would go uh, off to the manufacturer, and by tying that into the NetSuite RMA process, uh, with WorldShip, we cut that down really from a couple hours a day they were wasting in the warehouse down to 10, 15 minutes uh, and created you know, significant savings. You know, one of the other areas that, that I want to talk just briefly about is down here at the bottom of this, uh, this screen is the pre-shipping address validation. Uh, we've had a lot of companies, it seems like in, in the past year, really looking to drive cost out of their business and looked at situations where they shipped an order and it was either returned to them because the address was incorrect or uh, potentially it was delivered by the carrier and, and the company received a, an address correction fee. Um, so one of the extensions to NetSuite that, that really became more and more popular last year was doing some pre-shipping address validation. The idea here was try to eliminate mistakes both by having packages sent to the wrong address but, but almost as importantly, eliminating a customer service complaint 
or a loss of sale due to uh, an address validation issue or an address being incorrect when something was shipped. So we've worked with a lot of companies recently to, to automate that capability of validating addresses. And if the addresses are good on an order, they flow through the NetSuite process and become pending fulfillment as you would normally expect. However, if there's an issue, we can flag that order, make it available to the appropriate customer service team so they can either make a decision about the address or reach back out to the customer and verify an address. So it's a, you know, it's a simple business problem that, that typically goes un, unaddressed and it, it's something that can quickly contribute directly to the bottom line by automating and validating that address directly inside of the NetSuite fulfillment process. Yeah, and this is basically how that process works. So order entry uh, and it'd be queued up at uh, pending approval or pending fulfillment. Uh, and then we basically go and screen that and flag the risk areas, as Troy highlighted. Uh, and so it gets, and then really doing it up front ahead of the warehouse. You know, sometimes people will try to address that in the warehouse, and that sort of uh, doesn't really hit the root cause, the root issue, uh, and it becomes more costly. Uh, I talked about business rules earlier, and, and essentially what this means is looking at almost any attribute of that shipment, being able to pick the right carrier and service. So it could be shipment details based on something simple as weight. Uh, under you know, a certain weight, maybe goes UPS sure post, uh, as opposed to ground, especially if it's going to a US residential address. Uh, those, are, those are pretty basic, simple rules. But they can get more complex in terms of uh, looking at time and transit. Uh, and maybe there's a delivery date that's required for that customer and upgrading, either upgrading that shipment to maybe you know, UPS second day air or, or uh, premium service and air express type service to get it there on time to meet that customer need. Uh, or the flip side could be you know, it, was, it was ordered using uh, a premium service, but time and transit shows that ground will get it there on time. And again, that's a cost savings from a transportation standpoint. Yeah, I think really as I look at those business rules, the way, the way that I start to analyze them in talking with companies is I really want to be able to uh, have somebody new go out into my warehouse and be effective almost immediately. What I, what I want to try and avoid is having the, the person in the shipping department or in the warehouse having to have a lot of you know, knowledge about the business, a lot of experience with our business, and keeping track of different um, rules inside of their head and making decisions about, as Brian said, upgrading a service or downgrading a service or do I need to change the return address on the shipping label when I ship for one of my drop ship customers or things of that nature. Let's try to automate it so I can, I can plug in a new person, a temporary person and have ultimately NetSuite and my shipping process be smart enough to handle all of the business rules, make the appropriate decisions for me so the, the, the folks in the warehouse can really focus on the, you know, the physical side of, of getting things packaged and out the door. And, and as a result of that, those business rules, you'll see a number of examples here, and Brian mentioned a, a bunch of good ones, but really that business rule can be driven on anything that you want. You know, it, it could be value, it could be a, a class, certain types of orders get handled differently. So think of this as, as some examples of things that can drive a business rule. But it, it's not an exhaustive list here. It's just an idea. Uh, if you look at your process out in the warehouse and you see somebody you know, manually making a decision, there's, there's probably a business rule that can automate that process for you. Uh, so we talked about partner fulfillment a bit earlier. And really, a couple scenarios that we see. Uh, one is shipping where you know, the NetSuite user is drop shipping on behalf of a large retailer, the JCPenney example, um, you, you name Amazon, those sort of things. And that's a fairly common area, common scenario we see, especially for sort of the entrepreneurial growth companies uh, or um, even, you know, solar business example, they have a separate brand set up to sell through Amazon versus their own e-commerce site. So sort of segmenting their channels by brand, uh, doing that drop ship capability, those sort of things, um, and highlighting uh, the different processes that result. They have different pricing, different ship options, for example. Um, another scenario is where you are, you know, maybe not want to stock all those items, but have a supplier drop ship on your behalf. Uh, so being able to get that information uh, and track it appropriately uh, within NetSuite so you can, you know, service that customer, know when it was shipped, know what the shipping costs were, uh, and give the customer the visibility that they need and also ensure that it gets there 
uh, on time when they said they needed it. Um, we talked about the branded pack slips. Uh, and again, it just gets more complex. You bring up more channels, more retailers, more trading partners. Uh, to Troy's point, you know, trying to remember and, and have that flagged by someone in the warehouse or having a separate staging area for those type of retail compliant type shipments uh, does become really not that manageable and really can inhibit that growth, which could be one of the biggest growth channels uh, for customers in terms of you know, providing those goods through one of these large retailers. Well, and, and we had a company recently that, that actually used, that did shipping on behalf of Sears, JCPenney, and Walmart, and they accidentally put the wrong packing slip in the wrong shipment. And it was a situation where the customer received the correct product, but they had ordered it from JCPenney, and they opened the box and it had a Sears packing slip in it. And what ended up happening is that customer called, because they were concerned, like, was my credit card compromised or something of that nature? And so they called JCPenney, and JCPenney, you know, apologized and then found out, well, it was a drop ship shipment, contacted that supplier, and, and actually that supplier lost the lion's share of that business they did with JCPenney. Um, and it was a simple mistake. The customer actually got the right product, um, but, but it was a branding issue where somebody out in the warehouse happened to grab the wrong packing slip template. So, not only can it be a, a, a great channel to expand your business and drive additional revenue, um, it, it's a channel that is, is quite, I guess I would say, finicky. And if you don't adhere to their requirements, it, it, it's business that will quickly move away from you as well. Um, and then in terms of different options within the uh, warehouse pit, uh, to, to fulfill and, and get the orders done pre-ship uh, in a more efficient way, a couple of options. So, uh, one of the things we see quite common is batch processing. And on the left here, there's a, a combination pack slip, which can be branded, obviously, based on the customers, in this case, an Oz branded pack slip, uh, with a shipping label on the bottom, a UPS label. So this is very applicable in you know, customers who are shipping you know, a lot of the same item. They might, pick, they might go to their Nesby fulfillment screen, pick 25 or 50 orders, and print the, these combo labels out all in one fell swoop, go pick them pick them right into the box, apply the label, so you really streamline that process. Uh, and for the most part, in this scenario, you'd need always your weight in NetSuite. Um, you know, and another alternative, if you're using a scale, maybe just put a barcode at the bottom that then scans it and validates that order uh, and applies the label at that point from a batch standpoint. Similarly, in apparel industry, uh, we've seen this with both the outbound label and a return label uh, on the bottom. So you, you know, it gets shipped, the outbound label gets applied, the return labels put in the box uh, to facilitate return for that consumer. Yeah, you know, another quick example of that, a little bit different from the shipping label, is some sort of either gift type message or coupon. So we've got a company right now that does a lot of gift items, gift baskets, and that sort of thing. And what they want to do is they want to be able to present a gift card. So when you order from their website, you can write a note, you know, happy birthday, mom, I hope you enjoy the fruit, or whatever the case may be. But they wanted to make sure that that process of generating the gift card, one, was accurate. You didn't want to send the wrong product with the wrong gift message. And two, they wanted to make sure it was not overly labor intensive. So taking the form you see on the left and embedding a gift card into it um, was, a, was something that was really helpful for, for this particular company. Uh, and because it was automated, it, it didn't cost them a lot of time, but it really differentiated them from, from some of their competitors. Another quick example is coupon codes. You know, I know uh, many of us with, with e-commerce sites are used to coupon codes, and you know, those coupon codes get shared across the web, and, and people are using them. So more and more businesses are looking to drive unique coupon codes or different promotional codes that are delivered to customers, maybe based on their order value or frequency of ordering, et cetera. So being able to automate uh, generation of a, of a coupon code and having that message embedded in the proper packing slip based on who the customer is, what they ordered, what the dollar amount is, is another example where we're finding people using, you know, the concept of this packing slip with a label built into it that you see on the left side of the screen here. Now on the right, if, uh, you know, in scenarios where there's maybe mul uh, a set of orders, multi-item orders getting fulfilled, creating a master pick ticket, so now again that's going to streamline the path picking process through the warehouse and maybe picking you know, the same item from multiple orders 
uh, at the same time. So you're not you're really maximizing the efficiency of those pickers uh, to get those orders done and, and out the door. And then in this past year, we've seen you know quite a bit of growth. We have uh, formalized the partnership with SKS Commerce to provide the advanced ship notice capability right as part of that pick pack ship uh, process. So during that pack. Uh, process, being able to scan and capture the items in each box and, uh, and capture it as it should be uh, as part of that pick pack ship process, eliminating sort of portals, separate staging areas. Uh, and we talked about the pack slips earlier. You know, if you're shipping into some of these large retailers, they have mandates and requirements to do an EDI transaction and advance ship notice. Uh, the, you know, the, the purchase order, the invoice are going to be integrated directly into NetSuite. Uh, with SPS Commerce, uh, but the advanced ship notice often is the hardest piece of information to get out of the warehouse because the data that they require, which are what items are in which boxes, is captured in that warehouse. Uh, so by doing this as part of that process, really streamlining, capturing that data, populating it in NetSuite for that ASN, and then producing a compliant label uh, for that retailer as part of that process can really streamline those orders in along with your other orders that you're processing. Uh, so there's not a separate staging area. You're not going and typing the data back into uh, an EDI portal. Uh, and this is a this is a growth area we've seen quite a bit in the last year based on uh, the customer demand and, and that partnership. So one other nice thing about that EDI and that ASN automation is all of that package level information that you mentioned, Brian, lives inside of NetSuite. So you know one of the the challenges sometimes associated with EDI and supplying large retailers are chargebacks. You know, oftentimes you might get a call or an email from a, a supplier saying, oh, here's a chargeback associated with this shipment. And it's oftentimes very challenging to figure out, well, what's wrong with the shipment and go research it. And, and what we find is a lot of companies end up, uh, you know, paying or, or accepting chargebacks that they don't necessarily need to. So as part of this process, directly in NetSuite, you can look instantly and see, Here's what's packed in each box. Here's how many boxes shipped. Here's the tracking number for each of the cartons. So it makes it very simple to, you know, discuss and in some cases negotiate with your with your retailers that you're doing business with because you have access to the right package level information. It's not a big research project every time somebody comes along and, and suggests there may be a chargeback situation. So there's a an internal benefit uh, post shipment there as well. Uh, so, and that sort of wraps up the, the what definition and some details around advanced shipping. And in terms of you know, thinking about your business, again, your sales channels expanding, creating more business rules, complexity back in the back of the warehouse. Uh, how are things like you know, the omni-channel things like Amazon, eBay impacting your business? Being able to integrate those in, tying them in, uh, as opposed to you know, often customers will start there as that business grows, integrating that into the NetSuite order management process obviously becomes critical to making sure that the cost of cost efficiencies are maintained and that visibility of the order management piece that NetSuite provides uh, is consistent. Uh, and then we talked, as we just talked about, you know, customers who need certain documentation that could be uh, a compliant label, a branded pack slip, those sort of things. Uh, and then, you know, where are the opportunities to save dollars on your freight spend? And that might be picking, you know, ground over over next day, uh, address correction, those sort of things. So hopefully there are some things in here that help your business. Um, and I'd like to now turn it over to Stephen, uh, who will give us a bit of background on POS Supply Solutions and how he's using Auslink and NetSuite. Stephen? Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks, uh, Brian and Troy. And uh, I, uh, again, appreciate the uh, invite. And um, what I'd like to share today is I'll give you a quick overview of uh, POS Supply Solutions and then talk a little bit about how um, Auslink and uh, NetSuite um, have helped us to uh, solve some of the gaps we've had in our process and help us to provide you know, uh, better, better service to our customers and, and drive cost out of the, the process as well. So with that said, um, we're a company, we've been around since uh, 1999. We're a supplier of uh, point of sale and transaction supplies. And that includes anything from a receipt you receive at a uh, grocery store or a retail store to uh, an ATM receipt to a pay at the pump 
gas station receipt to uh, maybe even a speeding ticket or a parking ticket that you get these days where they're printed on uh, thermal roll paper as opposed to uh, two and three part forms. Uh, and then we do other specialty pre-printed uh, paper rolls as well. So uh, you'd be surprised that the, uh, the, the complexity and the variety uh, of those various rolls. Um, we've, we've got a, a large customer list and growing, and the, the, the customers range from mom and pop pizza shops all the way up to you know, Ritz-Carlton, uh, Harrah's, TGI Friday's, Subway, Dollar Tree stores, um, uh, et cetera. We, uh, uh, we, in, in, in roll paper, some of our, uh, you know, our products are typically pretty heavy, um, so our average item weighs about 19 pounds and it you know varies from you know one pound to, to, to 50 pounds and then we have a lot of uh, multi-package shipments as well so as, as you can imagine there's a lot of challenges there uh, in, in getting that freight cost down. Um, we are corporately based in Danvers, Massachusetts uh, and we ship uh, several hundred packages out of our corporate facility, but then we have uh, third-party vendors that we work with that we drop ship uh, packages, several hundred packages as well, um, primarily across the, the U.S., but we do do some uh, international shipping as well. So um, uh, we, uh, we've, we've been a NetSuite customer for seven or eight years now, and uh, we do use uh, CRM, ERP and uh, e-commerce, and we are 100% uh, NetSuite. Um, we've been working uh, with Oz for about seven years now, six or seven years um, as well. So uh, that gives you a, a, a kind of a quick overview of, uh, of the company. So a couple of the uh, areas that we uh, use NetSuite for to uh, help us close some gaps um, are number one is we use their uh, Oslink Pro tool to, uh, to leverage all the carrier services from uh, UPS, FedEx, and USPS. We're primarily a, uh, a UPS shop, but um, we do use uh, FedEx and, and, and USPS as well. And, and some of the gaps is there's some services that are not natively available in NetSuite. You know, for example, uh, UPS 100th weight, uh, FedEx multi-weight, uh, freight, uh, some third-party billing, some UPS shore post, et cetera, um, where uh, the Oslink tool gives us that, you know, that, that seamless integration with the various uh, carrier software um, to uh, enable us to use all those services and, again, completely integrated with, uh, with, with NetSuite. So, uh, again, the key thing there is, is synchronizing you know, all the costs, the tracking numbers, the shipping status, uh, et cetera. You know, and then also, you know, the visibility on the various costs as it relates to shipping from, from our actual uh, carrier cost to the published rate uh, to the rate that we charge the customer, because that can vary depending on the, uh, the situation there. So, um, you know, and then one thing that uh, Brian and Troy mentioned earlier, that address correction, where, you know, we do get, um, about 60% of our orders are online orders, and then we have the other 40% offline. So we, we are a B2B company, so we sell to a lot of retailers, uh, restaurants, gas stations, and whatnot. Um, so we're B2B, although a lot of our business does operate in a B2C type mode. So we use the website, we have offline ordering, and then we also use uh, NetSuite's uh, customer center. So we could have a a chain of restaurants, for example, that may have 40 locations with contracted pricing, so they log on to the customer order and they can uh, they can place orders there. So, um, again, the ability to uh, verify that address uh, is important because those address correction charges from uh, you know from the carriers add up you know very quickly. Um, another thing that we uh, that we utilize from from Oz is their Oslink um, rating tool, and what that does is it gives our customer service team uh, access to to key information to help them quote you know shipping costs, compare services, uh, uh, communicate delivery options, you know validate the address, uh, et cetera. And again, for us, 
um, because our packages weigh so much, it's, it's very important for us to make sure we ship it from the closest possible warehouse to that customer. And again, in this day and age, with you know, free shipping being so important um, you know, and, and quick turnaround um, on that, uh, it's, it's critical that we ship it from you know, the closest warehouse to get it to our customer as quickly as possible, but then also to get it to them uh, as cost effectively as possible. So uh, that, that Oslink rating tool is on all of our customer service desktop. So if they're talking to a customer, they're able to quote them real-time rates, uh, you know, uh, from the closest warehouse uh, based on putting in a couple key pieces of information where they don't have to enter the whole order. They can quickly, um, they can quickly look up and uh, communicate those rates. Um, another area um, that, that Oz has helped us, I had mentioned that we do a fair amount of drop shipping. So we We'll use the standard functionality within NetSuite to, to place POs with vendors. Um, and historically, what we would have to do is get the shipping information from UPS Quantum View, manually go in Quantum View, get the tracking number, get the shipping information, and import uh, that into NetSuite to go ahead and, and, and finish, to fulfill that product and build a customer. What we've been able to use do with uh, Oslink is do some advanced integration where we can automate the pulling out of that tracking information uh, and the shipping costs from Quantum View and putting that in the appropriate fields within NetSuite and even going uh, as far as to marking that order fulfilled. So again, we had a you know a somewhat manual process there that we were able to uh, automate you know with with the help of uh, Oz there. Um, you know, and, and you know, in, in, in summary, you know, we, we've been very pleased with our relationship with, with Oz for, for, you know, seven or eight years. And what we see in them is, you know, they're experts, you know, in that shipping, fulfillment, integration, um, you know, and they, they know all the various carriers and all the challenges there with, you know, um, you know UPS, FedEx, the, the, the LTL providers, uh, and then they know NetSuite as well. So we've been very pleased with their uh, consultative approach that they've that they've taken. Um, you know, we if we have an idea, or we see something, or see a new service, we call them, and they tend to already have uh, implemented a solution that they can point us to. So, um, you know, we we've been very pleased with our our relationship and the expertise and experience that we've uh, received from them. Thanks very much, Stephen. Uh, much appreciated, and you know, the insight that the. the the quantum view and the tracking dropship is uh, it does seem it's a pretty slick uh, uh, option. Again, I think it's one of the one of the newer capabilities in terms of the advanced shipping capabilities. Yeah, it sure is. I mean, again, we're, we we want to you know manually or we want to you know eliminate the manual processes and, and automate that you know whenever we can and and build in you know the appropriate rules uh, that you had talked about earlier as well. Well, great. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Um, so that sort of wraps up. We'll get to some Q&A in a bit. We do have a, a webinar uh, next Thursday about our mobile solutions, so optimizing your warehouse's barcode scanning. Uh, so that's an option you can register on the website. The website's netsuite.ozdevelopment.com. Um, and so I'll go through some more uh, details on the mobile solution. Uh, so now we'll go through a few questions. Uh, so one that came in was, does Oslink work or integrate with 3PL? Yeah, and, and that's a good question. You know, we've talked a bit about situations where there's drop ships, uh, drop ship type environments, or um, you know, you're drop shipping on behalf of, of somebody. But there are a lot of companies out there today that are really focused on the sales and marketing and support of their products, but somebody else is managing the, the warehouse and doing the shipping. So. Uh, over the years, we've, we've worked closely with NetSuite, and we have a module designed specifically for companies that are using a 3PL. And it, it's really designed to be a, a behind-the-scenes process. So when orders come into your system that are, are designated or uh, they meet the characteristics of an order that should be sent to the 3PL, that can happen automatically without any user interaction. And then ultimately, as that 3PL fulfills that order, uh, that information can be automatically updated back in NetSuite 
again, without any user interaction, and that can include triggering email notifications off to your customers, uh, you know, shipping number, uh, tracking numbers, shipping dates, all that information can be delivered off to your customers through standard NetSuite, uh, you know, fulfillment notifications. So it's certainly a, a great question and something that, that we, we see and, and have a lot of experience with today. Okay, thanks. Um, and here's another question. Um, you talk about carrier software, you know, UPS World Chip versus APIs. I mean, what's the difference between uh, the different uh, technologies? Between, you know, you, let's say using the carrier software versus oh, the carrier APIs. Yeah, no, it's a great question. So uh, if you sort of step back and look at all of the shipments, uh, you know, that are processed through UPS or FedEx is pretty similar. Um, across the country, you'll find that over 90% of those shipments are processed through the carrier's own shipping software. And so what that, what that translates to for UPS and FedEx is that's where they spend a lot of their time and their development efforts. And, you know, Stephen highlighted a couple of services uh, like SurePost and UPS 100 Weight and FedEx MultiWeight and SmartPost. From the carrier's perspective, what they tend to do is as they launch new services, they put them into their carrier software first, WorldShip, FedEx Ship Manager, uh, respectively. So with, with Auslink, what we'll do is we'll, we'll give you the capacity to use those systems so you can take advantage of all of the most recent and most current services where, you know, natively NetSuite uses the, the web-based APIs that are provided by the carriers. And from a technology standpoint, it makes perfect sense to do that inside of NetSuite it's just the carriers themselves will have some gaps in making things available, like, uh, you know, we'll use the example of SurePost from UPS. SurePost has been in, in UPS WorldShip for over a year now, and it's just launching in the web-based API. So it's a situation where, you know, NetSuite can do everything possible to, to give you as many services as, as they can, but there are situations where the carriers just make something available inside of their own WorldShip or FedEx Ship Manager first. Um, so that's where we see a lot of the benefit of Auslink. And also by using that, that software provided by the carriers, there's some other benefits that if you're in the warehouse start to mean real time savings. Simple things like using a scale, being able to get weights off of a scale as opposed to have to type in a weight. Uh, it's, a, it's a time saver if you process hundreds of packages a day. Additionally, label printing. The, the World Ship software, the FedEx Ship Manager software, even the uh, Indicia software that we use for processing postal shipments, all of those things print locally. As a result, you know, the label will print out basically at the speed of your label printer. So, you know, it might take one second or two seconds for that label to print versus uh, natively inside of Netsy, because it's using that web-based API, there's a little more traffic over the web, and that label file gets generated and then delivered down to you, uh, you know, locally where it needs to print out on your printer. So, you know, as opposed to it taking one second to print the label, maybe it takes five or six or seven seconds. So again, in a high volume facility, those few seconds per package really add up throughout the span of a day. So using that carrier technology, uh, or the most commonly used carrier technology can, can give you access to some services as well as some, some uh, performance benefits in many cases. Okay, um, Sorry, we'll have a couple thing. other questions. Um, around, do you support Canada Post uh, or configuration to support Canada Post? Yeah, certainly. We do integration with Canada Post. Um, Purelator is another pretty common one for, uh, for Canadian shippers. Uh, for those folks out on the West Coast with uh, on track, it used to be California overnight. Um, that, that's another module that's available through Auslink to provide integration. And um, I think we mentioned, but, but I'm not 100% sure, but also DHL. If people are using uh, the DHL global mail, even those new DHL domestic mail services, um, those are certainly things that we can help you automate as well. Um, and then there is a question here in terms of you know, speeding up the lookup and net speed fulfillment, I think, you know, probably take that as a call out. Depending how that interaction is done, you know, leveraging things like some barcode scanning or web service lookup, there's options, but I think it's probably looking at specifically the scenario that you have uh, and whether it's something on our side or, or work with NetSuite to get that improved. 
Uh, and then there's a question on, can you cover off some of the costs associated with Audlink? Yeah, and it, it really varies depending on, on the solutions. Um, so earlier it had, had come up the Auslink Pro solution, which is an integration of UPS WorldShip with the uh, NetSuite fulfillment process, and that's $29.95 per month, um, ranging up through the mobile warehouse automation solutions uh, that will st typically start at $300 a month, and implementation there can, can vary from you know, four or $5,000 to you know, more than that. Uh, depending again on the number of users and modules that get turned on. So um, the, the key thing to me about pricing or two key events for me for pricing is one, uh, philosophically the way we design the extensions to NetSuite is they're modular. So if you came along and said, you know, the really critical thing for me is address validation or integration with my 3PL um, or mobile barcode scanning or shipping integration with WorldShip. Everything we do is designed that you can pick the things that you need without buying things that you don't need. Uh, so I think that modular design is, is really important. And two, when we, when we talk with a company, what we'll always work towards is documenting, well, here's what your requirements are, here's what modules make sense. So before we ever ask you to, to give us an approval to move forward with a, a big project or a small project, you're going to have documented from us Here's what the cost is going to be, and that uh, you know that will be the cost, and it won't change. So, I know that's a it's a big range depending on the solutions, but um, you know we have over 20 different uh, modules or extensions to the NetSuite platform that we offer, so they do range quite a bit. And what we found is that helps people start with you know again where they are on the on the sort of path with NetSuite. Start with something simple, get payback that helps fund the next thing, or maybe they don't need the next thing until they grow or get you know, maybe new sales channels, uh, you know, gets added or, you know, for example, in the, in the Lionel case, a merger, those sort of things, you know, those are things that add the complexity where the additional modules become, you know, again, you know, pretty fast ROI and payback. Okay, there's uh, time for a couple more questions, I think. There's one around, so how do you handle U.S. Customs documentation to Canada? It's a great question. So they're, they're, the most common answer is through the carrier-provided software. Uh, so for example, if I'm um, using the Postal Service, FedEx, or UPS, Auslink fully supports sending the carriers not only your address and service level information, but all of the commodity level information about what are you shipping, what's it worth, where did it come from, tariff codes, uh, country of origin, unit of measure, all of that information can be automated through Auslink, so the time it takes to process that international shipment can be exactly the same amount of time it takes to process a domestic shipment, but the appropriate paperwork is printed or the appropriate label are, is printed through the carrier software, or in many cases today, it's a, you know, with UPS and FedEx, it's more of a paperless process, uh, but we fully support international shipping and, and all the required information that goes along with those types of shipments. Uh, and it looks like maybe time for one more question around how do you handle lot numbered items, lot items? Yeah, it, it's something that we deal with every single day, both lot number and serial number controlled items. So it depends where in the process um, we're working with an item. So at the time of PO receiving, for example, we often help uh, in collecting lot numbers or serial numbers and storing that information inside of NetSuite. Um, and in some cases, it's more of a packing and shipping type of process where when we get ready to fill, fulfill something, if it's a lot number or serial number controlled item, we need to, to enable a simple process to capture that, either through a, uh, a mobile barcode scanner or even a, uh, you know, a barcode scanner that may be plugged into your computer via cable or, or connected via Bluetooth. So certainly something we help automate for a lot of NetSuite users today. Uh, so let's wrap it up. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time. I know everyone's busy, so taking the time out and, and uh, learning a little more about advanced shipping, and especially for Stephen uh, for taking time out of his day and sharing his insights in terms of his business and how he's leveraged NetSuite and Auslink. Uh, if you do have any more further questions or any more follow-up, certainly feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we do have a NetSuite dedicated site. Again, that's netsuite.ausdevelopment.com. Uh, we have a LinkedIn group which you can join uh, just to get updates on new capabilities, again, things like that, 
you know, pre-ship address validation. As those come out, uh, that's a good place to find them. So appreciate everyone's time. Thank you very much.